with Minecraft getting archaeology, sniffer and torch flowers, cherry blossom trees, and buff jukeboxes. There are so many questions on how these new blocks behave and act compared to old ones. Does suspicious sand work like other sand? Can the new seeds and plants be composted? Will the decorative pots ever be able to hold anything? Hello there, Ray here, and in today's video, we'll be answering all those questions. Let me know if I miss answering any others. Make sure you're still subscribed and leave a like, and let's get into it. So at this height, the sand that's normal will actually duplicate through the end portal. Uh, but suspicious sand, when it's dropped, it looks like it splats here. But let me show you what it looks like from the other side. So the normal sand comes through and it'll actually uh, duplicate. Alt key will throw in the suspicious sand. And you can see, even though it looked like it splatted on the overworld, it comes through, it doesn't duplicate, but you actually get the entity over here. In case you really want to move suspicious sand into the end dimension, it's possible. So since suspicious sand falls like a sand entity, if we drop it onto some bubbles, which come from this bubble elevator, you can see it actually will just bounce there, just like any other sand would. But over time, it would eventually pop off. Oh! Looks like I actually popped off and dropped something. Pick it up. Oh, I actually dropped a suspicious sand. So I guess you can get it as a block that way. This can also be done by dropping it into something that stalls it. Well, if you look at the data of a real suspicious sand, it has a loot table seed, tells where the block is at, what type of block it is, and the loot table is for the archaeology desert well. So the block itself doesn't know what exactly is inside of it, but does know what table to get its loot from. So in a desert temple, if we go ahead and place all the normal sand with glass, we can see this area of the temple actually had sand that was filling in this entire area. All this was sand in here. And by filling it with glass, we can see that inside of it, we had some of it being suspicious sand. The item always comes out on the side that you're closest to. So it can go in that side, and then it comes back on this side because we moved to this side. And then if we stand on top, we can make it come out the top. Pots themselves can be waterlogged, similar to like chest. And the size is the same, so you could use them to uh, like align items or like item storage. But it seems pots are kind of special when you move the block beside them. It doesn't actually update the water, so it continues to float one direction. This could be a bug. If you compare this to like a chest, when you remove this block, the water flows that way too. Water will actually remove these vegetation, but won't move the suspicious sand. And pots aren't also affected by it. Sand always needs some type of support, otherwise it will fall and break, but the pots can float in midair. For the torch flower and petals, they do need some type of dirt type of block in order to be placed on top, so they can't be placed on like sand. If we look at these two plants with F3, we can see they're actually different blocks in the game. This one's called a torch flower crop, and this one's just called a torch flower. And look at the suspicious sand in F3, you can see there is quite a bit of information on the side. Including the name, the amount of dusted it is, the more you right click on it, the more dusted it comes. It also has the property of being able to have dead bushes placed on top. It is considered like a sand, similar to like red sand. It can be replaced with skulk, bamboo can be placed on it, as well as azalea. And if we use F3 plus I, we can see the properties it has. If you use block data to look at a pot, it'll actually tell you the different types of shards which are put together in order to make it. Not normally when using the data get block command on a block, if it's not a block entity, it won't give you any data. So because it works on stuff like the pot, it is possible for them to actually give them an inventory, although it looks like they're block entities, so they can store this information. Now, oddly enough, even if you have a pot that doesn't have any of these logos on it, it's just a completely plain one. Uh, when you're holding it in the hand, you can see that it does show up with logos. It also shows up logos in the hotbar, but when you place it down, there isn't actually any images on it. When you drop it, there's a weird, big, dark blob. It looks like the dark pot is actually when the player throws the item, the item collides with the player's head, and you can actually see inside of the pot, which is black, I guess, if we go ahead and unpause it. So if you go into spectator, oh, wow. Yeah, we could definitely see the, the black bottom now. Uh, I don't know if that was intended to be textured. Maybe they'll actually add something so you can see something inside. This could indicate that the pot might hold something in the future. For the F3 menu, all it does is it tell you that it's a decorative pot and what direction it's facing, and if it's waterlogged or not. The decorations on the pot don't actually produce any redstone signal. The buff jukeboxes are really crazy, so I'll be doing a whole different video just dedicated to them, including showcasing this amazing disorder and automatic disc farm. Now since the decorative pot is not a full block, doesn't suffocate mobs, let's go ahead and try the suspicious sand, and it is like a solid block, it does suffocate them. Let's go ahead and try to put redstone through it, and yep, it just acts like a normal block, which also means it cuts off redstone dust, where the decorative pot does not. The cool thing about these decorative pots is that you can put a flower pot on top of them. It does have a little bit of Z fighting going on currently, but then you can always place in whatever type of 
vegetation on top of that and it kind of looks like it's growing out of the pot. Alternatively you could just come in and place like vegetation directly on top of it. It would be cool if you put like a full size azalea on it instead of a little one. We could use commands to do this but this isn't really possible in survival. Now let's see if we can actually place these blocks beside a cactus. For the suspicious sand, let's try to place the cactus on top and you cannot actually place it there. You can place the petals, you can also place in the torch flower, but suspicious sand will actually break it off. Pots themselves also have some collision, which is typically what the cactus looks for. Lines and paintings still work on these. Bone milling in other biomes will produce normal vegetation, but bone milling inside of a cherry blossom biome will produce their unique pink petal flowers. So you can get these on Skyblock just by having the biome. More detailed information about the pink petal in this video here, including an entire automated farm. Apparently you can't use like the log as fuel, but you can use the cherry planks. Also logs can't be used as charcoal. This might be a bug. Now when it comes to the suspicious sand, it doesn't actually cook, unlike normal sand. And none of the new blocks actually put off any light. Because the suspicious sand is solid, it doesn't let light through, but something like the decorator pot does. Let's go ahead and try to pull the suspicious sand and it can't actually be moved. And if we try to push it, it just breaks off. Which means you cannot also pull the suspicious sand with slime blocks. It completely ignores it. Otherwise, silk touch doesn't work on it. If we try to push the pot, it also breaks off, but drops as an item. Same thing for the torch plant, as well as the petals. So let's go ahead and try to use the seeds on the composter. The seeds work, so does the torch flower, and so does the petals. With petals giving the least efficiency for composting, torch seeds next, and the best being the torch flowers, being equivalent to these other items. When it comes to flammable, let's go ahead and see if we can start a fire on any of these. It doesn't seem that we can. Easy way to tell if something's flammable is actually clicking on the side of it. If it places the flame against it, then it can be burned. And when it comes to these big trees, you can see that the leaves as well as the wood is all flammable. Apparently the torch flower isn't even considered a flower. We can see this in the F3 screen so bees can't get like nectar from it. Or the pink petals are actually considered flowers so bees could use those. Now if you would grow it up and then use a fortune axe on it, it doesn't actually give you anything extra nor does the small seeds. Now you can use silk touch on the leaves and you can also use fortune on them. You get a higher chance of them dropping something like sticks or saplings. So all the different tree products work just like the other tree products which means you can actually start fires up against all of these different types of wood and they'll burn. Like other saplings, you can get the new cherry saplings from wandering traders. The new cherry leaves are also considered flowers, just like azalea leaves. That means bees can actually use them. I'll be going into more detail about cherry trees and how they work when I showcase this crazy automatic cherry tree farm. Now when the sniffer does sit down, it doesn't actually change its hitbox. Notice the actual little white line stays the same compared to when it stands up. Unlike most mobs, when you hold their food, which is used to breed, they'll follow you, but these guys don't. Let's look at the data of these big dinos by doing the data command. So they got a lot of attributes similar to other mobs. When spawned in, their health is 14, which is a little bit higher than some passive mobs. Since sniffers are passive mobs, you can put them on leads, which is a great way to move them about. I talked more about sniffers and them digging up torch flower seeds as well as how you can automate the process of getting the torch flower in this video here. Now check out this playlist all about other crazy glitches discovered in 1.20 or this one on different secrets in the game. Thank you all who joined my live stream. It's so much fun interacting and testing out all the newest things when the snapshots come out. You guys can join me in playing in this world every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday where I live stream and you can learn about the server IP on my Discord. Look forward to new videos about 1.20 and thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys next one. Bye-bye.